Hi Twitch and welcome back. We are live here from the expo floor at AWS reInvent 2018 in Las Vegas. Um, we're here for another Launchpad session. Um, so I'm joined by Ian Massingham from the Evangelism team Hi. and Anu Sharma, uh, who is the PM that launched a product called Outpost the other day. Anu, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, so first off, can you tell us a little bit about what you launched? Sure, uh, AWS Outpost we launched uh, yesterday with Andy's keynote. It's fully managed AWS infrastructure at customers' data centers. Any data center that can have a connectivity to an AWS public region uh, can now get AWS infrastructure, which they can use to run EC2 services, uh, EBS volumes, or really any AWS service that you want to run locally uh, that run on EC2 instances. Can you tell us a little bit about what kinds of challenges we're solving for customers with something like Outpost? What situations do you want to use it in? Yeah. How is it helping us? Yeah, the major use cases are for applications that require low latency, that want uh, to run closer to their data source. Uh, you want to ingest, say, video streams and you want to process it real time before you upload it to the cloud. So things that require physical that are constrained by physical latency or speed of flight constraints, yeah. So ultimately, I can use Outposts to get closer to where my workload is being run. That's right. Gotcha. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how it, about how it works? Yeah, uh, so just uh, the, the way today you would, if you were to do it today, you would log into an AWS management console, you would uh, configure your instances, just the same way as you choose your instances today. Uh, whatever, you can mix and match, you can order one server, you can order a full rack, uh, you can pick a C5, you can pick an M5, uh, it'll get shipped to your location, you can just plug it into your network and uh, power connection, and magically it'll appear into your AWS VPC environment, <laughs> and you can launch instances into it just the way you do today. Does it, does it appear as another availability zone or as another region in your console then? Is that what you it will see? It is not another region. It's okay. part of your existing AWS public region, and okay. it's managed the same way. Understand. The same way as we roll out our updates, in fact, to our software, to our existing region, it'll roll out to, out, to Outpost as well. Great. It's actually, it's a, it's a cool idea, right, because it's, it's like the, the AWS kind of managed version of all the stuff that you used to have to do in a data center by yourself, but closer to where you actually are. Yes, and That's customers awesome. have been asking us for a while for this, yeah. Um, so I have a couple questions from Twitch. Uh, so David R. 7777 says, do you need a dedicated link to AWS? What minimum bandwidth do you need? You do not need a dedicated link. It can go over a direct connect if you choose to, but it can also go over a VPN, over just, just plain internet. And Minimum bandwidth, uh, there should not be uh, a need for AWS control plane to consume a lot of bandwidth. It depends on your application. It depends on the latency that you require to the region. So all of that depends on you and your configurability. So same, re same requirements as you would for just thinking about your workload, not a lot of extra required for the control plane itself. That's right. We've got another question from JR White 44 They're asking whether there's a complete list of services that, as you described it, run on EC2 instances. Or maybe there's a list of services that don't run on EC2 instances. Will that be something that's provided when the service launches? Yeah, so the, the thought here is that regular regional services like S3 and DynamoDB, they will continue to operate from a region. The same regional endpoints that you would experience inside a public region. But for cases or services that really just launch on an EC2 instance underneath, RDS, EMR, SageMaker, all of them will run locally on an outpost. Right. Um, so if you're not following along on Twitch chat, by the way, um, the Rob Chen from Product Marketing uh, for Outposts uh, said, not another region, think about it as another availability zone. So same, same infrastructure as the region, just a little bit closer. Um, another question from, from Twitch, uh, do these run in VPC subnets or within the customer's data center network? It does not run in the customer's data center network. It's part of an extension of your AWS VPC environment. So you can think of it as a subnet or you can think of it as another VPC that maps to your AWS VPC cloud environment, really. Gotcha. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, because I think what I, I'm trying to summarize a couple of the questions on Twitch, right, which is how do I, how do I actually get started with it? That do I, I just, I order the hardware and then what is it, what does it feel like after that? Like how do, I, how do I update it, how do I maintain it, how do I do that kind of well, stuff? Well frankly you don't have to do anything. You literally just have to plug it into a power and network connection and let it come up. And if there's anything that has to happen, AWS does it. AWS patches it, updates it. If there's any, you get health metrics, you can track those health metrics in your console. If there's any maintenance that's to be done, you literally just have to pull it out and ship it back to us and we'll ship you back another one. Nice. 
Um, so another kind of question from Twitch asking about the difference between um, VMware Cloud on outposts that run on EC2 or, out, or, or services that run on VMware. Uh, I think that's what they're getting at, VMware Cloud on AWS. Yeah, so the VMware Cloud on AWS works natively today on AWS, so it should just work the same way as on an outpost. AWS VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, VMware Cloud on AWS requires you to put uh, your instances in your own VPC, so this is now part of your existing VPC and you can create it SDDC uh, inside your VMware environment on your outpost and that'll be part of your VMware Cloud on AWS environment. VMware Cloud Foundation and EC2 is a new product that VMware is announcing. It's, uh, it's part of their Cloud Foundation series uh, where they, are, will, they want to support a bunch, uh, in fact, a collection of technologies that will now integrate with EC2 instances uh, as compared to VMs uh, that run on VMware software. Awesome. Uh, you know, I think we have three more questions from Twitch. Do you want to pass those on? Yeah, I will. So there's a question about whether or not the RDS support will include Aurora, or whether it is just the other uh, open source or proprietary commercial database engines that will be supported on RDS. So it will be primarily RDS. Okay, but not R not RDS Aurora, right? Not Aurora. Okay, great. And then there's a question from AK. DSK. Well, Usernames are hard. Yeah, usernames are hard. It's the <laughs> hardest problem in computer science, as everyone knows, naming things. So what, are, what kind of technical resources or people are needed on the customer side to manage this? Maybe it's a question about skills, really. What kind of skills are needed to enable a, a customer to productively use this service? Yeah, ideally nothing. Uh, I, I'm, and I'm relatively non-technical, I can pull it out myself and just put it in a container and ship it back to us and we'll ship you another one and you slide it in again. Okay, so the hardware itself is kind of modular in terms exactly. of its design. And what about, uh, presumably, the skills that you use in managing your regular AWS environment are entirely transferable onto this from a management and provisioning perspective. Exactly. So just using those same API calls or console wor wor workflows that you would normally use? The same, the AWS experience stays exactly the same. Same APIs, the same services. It's AWS, not a, not a version of AWS. It yeah. is AWS. Um, then, we have, oh, so go oh, ahead. Sorry, I was going to say there's one more question from, I can get this one. I think it's SAP integrated or SAP integrated. Good to see some SAP fans on the stream. Uh, will load balancing between multiple outposts in different data centers be possible without pushing traffic to the AWS cloud? So that's quite an interesting and detailed yeah. question. Uh, we're working through many of our network design details, yeah. and in fact, we're looking to customers to have a collaborative conversation with us as to what is important to them. So and that's one of the things that we want to dive into in one of our, in, in the coming days. And so, uh, please sign in, uh, sign up to learn more at our Outposts uh, site. Uh, aws.amazon.com slash outposts and write to us about what's important to you. Yeah, you'll find, as, in, as is common with most AWS services that are in preview, there's a, a sign-up form for the preview service that will ask you some information about your intended use case. So the best way to get your feedback to us is to fill that form out with as much detail as you can supply, and then the product team will receive that and we can incorporate those usage requirements into our design lifecycle. That's essentially how the preview process works, That's right? That's right. Yeah. Um, and this is a great time for feedback also. Yeah. So the way that you're, we're still in I think the phase where we're, we're having those kinds of conversations and we want to hear from all of you on how you want this to be implemented. So if you have a cool use case, uh, or if you have something that you want to see, this is a great time to, to let the team know. That's right. Um, I have a, so a couple of general questions asking about how it's built. So will I get on the same, will it go on the same AWS bill as anything else or will there be a separate kind of outpost bill? It will be part of your regular AWS management bill. Uh, in summary, guys, I think what we're kind of getting at is that it, it is literally just AWS. That's right. <laughs> but, it's, but it's supporting a different use case for you. Um, so it feels a little funky, right? Because it's, it's based in the data center instead, but it's, it's getting you all the same things. It's built the same way, it works the same way, same management console, same VPCs, just showing up like, like another little availability zone for you. That's right. Um, can you speak maybe a little bit more generally about the, the use cases where you think that this is going to be really powerful for customers? So different kinds of workloads that you think would really benefit from this or, or something like that? Yeah, a few of the workloads uh, basically where latency or data transfer is a, is a mission critical factor. So for example, if you're running a trading platform, latency is the reason you exist uh, and you need to be in fact both fair and fast uh, to all the participants in your ecosystem. Uh, if you're running um, 
manufacture, a manufacturing site and have robotics and you want, uh, you're processing objects in real time and you have uh, real time feeds and you're detecting objects in real time. Or if you're ingesting video feeds at a, real, uh, at a live sporting event and you're processing data in real time, all of those are latency sensitive events. Um, a question from Twitch for, uh, once again, a username that I cannot have any hope of pronouncing. <laughs> um, is there a multi-tenant mode? All tenancy modes that we provide on AWS today will be supported on Outpost. So if you have a dedicated host or a shared tenancy, we're billing it just the same way as AWS. Awesome. Um, Ian, did you have another one? There's quite a few questions about uh, the provisioning process, more detailed questions about the provisioning process. So when a customer orders Outpost hardware, how will that work? Will they have to say, I want this mix of instances and this much EBS capacity? Or are there going to be more con constrained, more standardized building blocks for constructing the cap capacity? How much flexibility will customers have? Yeah, you can start with as little as a single server. You can scale up to one or more servers. You can order a full rack or a quarter rack or a or half rack. Uh, and then you can mix match. You can add a C5 instance and an M5 instance or another instance. You, you can do uh, whatever uh, when, you want. When you describe what one server, you're talking about the largest instance in that particular family, right? So That's it'd be right. like a C5, I don't know, 8XL. 18XL, yeah. And, and then you can partition that down into as many instances as you want on that particular hardware platform. Right. And then add an M5 yes. at the largest size and exactly. partition that as well, exactly. right? Yeah, so those are largest building blocks, but yeah. we've got plenty of customers that use multiples of those, right? That's right. Yeah. I love that there are instances that go up to 18XL. It just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy that. Um, we have those in <laughs> Europe as well, unlike 18XL clothing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's pretty savage. Uh, so, someone on the on the firecracker team, um, who came up the other day and was like, "All of the hoodies are so big. Sizes in the U.S. are so big." And I'm like, "I'm wearing a men's extra large." <laughs> I, I, I've got a small, and I'm floating it. I know. <laughs> um, I have another question from Twitch. Uh, thank you for having an easy username, by the way. Um, it's Thursday, so I'm struggling even a little bit harder than usual. Um, NYC Kid 80 says, if I have local service APIs, how can I bridge those uh, to what's happening in the AWS outpost? Yeah, it depends on what kind of network connectivity you have on-prem. If you have a layer two network, you probably want to use an, uh, VMware NSX to connect to uh, AWS networks or VPC networks, which are largely layer three networks. Um, if you already have a layer three network, and that that basically is a configuration detail which you would provision with your VM with your outposts. Um, so someone is asking about reservations and leasing. There's not a whole lot of information in that question, so I think take that as you will. We are working on things, and if you have a, a preference one way or another, please let us know. Um, so what I think would be really interesting here, because I think we're, we're very much still in kind of the building and, and thinking phase, is uh, if you could tell us a little bit about how, how you guys have been thinking through building this and how you've been making the choices that you have and how you've kind of, how you've been doing the thought process behind yeah. the, the design for Outpost. Yeah, um, well, let's look at what we have today. We have uh, AWS Web Services on one end, and we have uh, Snowball Edge and Greengrass at the other end for specialized use cases for uh, IoT and disconnected environments. Um, but and as customers have been migrating to AWS, large segments of customers and, the, and their applications are migrating to AWS, some of them have been saying that there are sub, some applications that they cannot move to AWS, largely because of physical constraints as we talked right. about, the latency factors, and moving data across the cloud to the cloud. Uh, this, is a, this has been a hard problem for us, and so we've been working on this for years now. And it's hard because customers don't want a downgraded version of AWS. They want AWS, same APIs, the same services, th the same infrastructure, and the same experience. Um, and so we, we looked at this many different ways, and the, the, turn, the turning point came for us uh, a few months ago when we were working with a customer, Andy calls them far zones. Uh, but really what we, what we realized, we took a step back, and we realized that a lot of the new technologies uh, had just begun to fall in place. So for example, uh, with the new Nitro system, we have a web service running on each server. It's a completely uh, dependency-free web service, which if you map back to the EC2 control plane using, say, something like a private link or a direct and a direct connect, you now can map every server that's sitting on any data center back to the EC2 control plane. So 
that gave us a pause, which meant that now AWS Control Plane can operate any server in any environment. And so that basically meant that we had something like Outposts. I think what's so cool too is that it's it's the, literally the physical version of the same question that customers ask for for pretty much any other service, right? Which is how can I use this thing that I like, but also have AWS help me yeah. and give me a, and, and give it to me as part of my broader AWS experience. And now that just taken one step further to your physical data center, yeah. which is it's uh, very cool. There's a question here from Storm Leong asking whether or not it's possible to manage these uh, outpost, outpost resources with infrastructure as code tools like CloudFormation and Terraform. Yes. All of your monitoring tools, your automation tools should work just the same way. So you're just specifying a different availability zone in your... For, for example, the way I, I launched today uh, an auto-scaling group, I yep. specify a subnet. Yep. You would specify a subnet that maps to your outpost okay. and you would launch an auto-scaling group in that, yeah. Okay, great. Another question from Crazy Broken Mike. Uh, what about installation services? Will customers self-install the hardware when it arrives at their site? Will AWS turn up and install it for them, or will there be partners that assist with hardware deployment? We're working through all of those options, and if customers want AWS or a partner to be able to deploy it on their site, we're happy to provide those services, but ideally these should be simple enough for anyone to be able to deploy them. Uh, but if customers want it, we'll, we'll show up and deploy it for them. Okay, great. Uh, Q That's Paulson. a good example, by the way, sorry, of, of things that you should let us know if you're, if you're looking for that. Yep. So if you want the capability to have a partner come and help you or for AWS to come and help you, now is the right time to, to let us know that so we can talk about it. Uh, Q Paulson on stream asks whether this will be limited to 20 physicals like Snowball Edge or whether you'll be able to run multiple racks which go beyond 20, server, 20 servers in a single local environment. Yes, answer is yes. Much, you can scale it to multiple racks. Okay. Um, uh, a couple of these, by the way, um, were, were answered already, so I'm just going to recap them. Um, it does not show up as, a, as its own region. No. It, is, it is basically like an extent, you can think extension of it as of an, an, yeah, an yes. extension of an existing one. Um, also, for whoever is trying to summon demons from the underworld with their Yubi keys in Twitch chat, it does not work. It is unsupported here. Yeah, we've already tested it extensively and it just doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Moobot <laughs> would ban you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Um, I have one more thing, probably um, that we had we had talked about 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 talking today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how kind of what makes Outpost different? How how is it kind of different from from me managing my my own data centers or what what kind of what's what what makes Outpost kind of like the the, the special sauce that goes into it? Yeah. Uh from what we've heard with, from customers, nobody likes to manually update and patch their hardware. Nobody even likes to manage hardware. I uh, didn't. <laughs> so the, uh, the concept of a fully managed service, including infrastructure, meant that customers can now contact one, one single point of contact, one point of support. You don't have to certify your applications a million different times for different vendors. You just have one environment and it lives in the cloud and you just have to move the same application and deploy it now on-prem. Nobody else is able to do that in any form today. Uh, you build it once and you deploy it anywhere. That's, that's the core. Build it once, deploy it anywhere. Um, that's awesome. Anu, thank you so much for joining us today. That was really awesome. Thank you. I, I believe that there are some links in the chat, so if you're looking for the, for the extra details page or how to get started, um, come and hang out in the chat and we'll, we'll have the links for you. Uh, and if not, we will see you again in just a couple of minutes back here on twitch.tv slash AWS. Thank you.